For sales processing, let's go ahead and enter a few different sales orders here in different ways. So for example, we can go ahead and enter one through the website. Uh, so the system has a website that's integrated with it and it could be customized. So this is a basic one. And uh, you could see that there are a few different products in here. So I'll go ahead and uh, buy a couple of these uh, little parts, the, the wheels and the portable fans. Three of these. And two fans. Right? And for example, we could have a situation where just like me right now, uh, a customer went ahead and added these items into the shopping cart and then called in, right? Because we might have a question about something that, that they're doing here. And in that case, if they do call in, I'm switching back to, to uh, pose as an employee, for example, a customer service employee in this case, I'll go to the sales module and I can see that there is a, there's a quotation pending in here. It's actually the shopping cart of this client. So I can see that there are three of the wheels and two fans in here. And uh, for example, in this case, the customer may be asking for whether the quantity of the wheels is right or not. And um, as a customer service person, I know that actually he needs four. So I can go ahead and correct this. And in this case, I get a message saying that I am trying to sell four wheels to this client, but we have zero on the shelf. So we wouldn't be able to ship immediately. So I'll say, okay, thanks for the warning. And I'll save this. And now I'll go back and pretend to be the customer again and refresh my screen. You can see that in here, the quantity of the wheels updated to four from, from three. So I don't think that we'll be needing this anymore. We will not be finishing a transaction through the online store. But let's go ahead and confirm this on the back end in here. So I will edit it to add the customer. And in this case, let's say, for example, that uh, we're selling these items to the Web Grains company. And you can see that when I selected that, my invoice address became accounts payable and delivery address became John Erickson. That is because I have these things set up on the system. Uh, so there is an invoice address and a delivery address set up as default for this. So there could be multiple different ones and uh, we could customize that as necessary. Aside from setting the default invoice and delivery addresses, I could also assign a price list that's default for a client. So in this case, I have three different choices. There could be more or less. So they could be either discounts from the list price or there could be completely separate prices depending on the client and uh, the type of product in here. So I'll leave it as list in this case. And I will go ahead and say that for this order, I'll charge flat fee delivery. I'll save it. And I will go ahead and process this order. So now uh, this order is processed in the system and it's generating demand to ship these items to our client. So, but besides that, I also want to go ahead and uh, say that in this case, the client prepaid their order, so they made a deposit. So I will go ahead and create an invoice and I will create a down payment invoice for 100% of a down payment. I could say 100% here, or I could also take a look and just copy this amount in here. Create invoice, fixed amount, create and new. So I have my down payment amount in here. I'll validate this and it will fill out all the information in here, of course, and I will say register payment. Let's say, for example, that they paid us uh, by credit card or by cash or whatever it may be, but we will put $109.15 into our bank as a deposit. So I will validate this, and now this, in, this sales order is listed as paid. I'll go in here. You can see that there's this down payment line in here. So one item was invoiced, $109.15, but actually nothing was ordered in there. And to make it clear what it does, let's go ahead and look at the accounting entries that it created. So I'll go to the accounting screen, reporting, and balance sheet. 
I can see that I have some records already in the system and I have $109.15 in this current liability as a deferred revenue account in here. This is what um, that amount is. And let's see what else I have in here. And there's no earnings, so there's no, there's no profit in here yet. So no revenue was recognized, so it's all correct. We just have a liability on our, on our books and we received $109.15 as cash into our account. To provide more diversity to this demo, let's go ahead and enter the our sales order. So I will go back to the main menu, go back to the sales menu again, and I'll create the next quotation and the sales order. Picking the client, let's pick Smith Motors. So last time it was Web Grains, now the other one. You can see that in, in this case, we have a price list pre-selected, B2B pr client price. So it's not the list price, there is a discount for this customer. So we are having special prices in here. And uh, their standard shipping was also selected. What we'll sell to them is a shelf with bins. So the portable wheeled shelf, 18 red bins. This is a product. I'll go ahead and save it. And this way I'll be able to show you this shelf in here. I can click on it, click through, close this, and you can see that the shelf looks kind of like this. Here it is. And I can go back from the product back to my sales order through the breadcrumbs again. I'll click edit again. And you know what? Let's not sell them one, let's sell them 10 of these shelves. And in here, in the other information tab, for example, in this case, because it's a big customer, they gave us a PO number, and its PO number is 12345. There are other parameters in here that may be applicable in some cases, and in some cases not. For example, we could um, bill the sender or the receiver on shipping, and that would be applicable for parcel freight. So, for example, UPS, FedEx, that type of thing. We could use a customer account or our account. We could request signature, or there are some other uh, different criteria for deliveries for small parcels. In this case, we don't really need to worry about these things. And another thing that we will go ahead and delete is the shipping. So we will say that we will just cover the shipping cost. It's free because the order is so big. I could set an expiration date on this, given that this is actually a quotation at this point. So let's go ahead and set um, August 30th, for example, so several days from now and I will click confirm sale so now this order has been processed and uh, there are deliveries pending for it so one of the peculiar things in the setup for this particular product I will show you here is the fact that it's a kit so see this shelf with 18 red bins on top of it? It's actually a kit where the client um, orders the, the full assembly, but for our warehouse, the order is sent out to ship them a shelf without the bins and the 18 separate bins on top of a, on top of a shelf. So I'll go back to the sales order. And let's go ahead and look at the deliveries that are pending now. So I have two operations going on here. I have a picking operation and a shipping operation. So the picking means that we're bringing some material from the warehouse into the shipping location, and then we actually send it out. So I could see that there's something ready on the picking operation, and the other one is waiting for another thing. For the picking operation, I could see that, as I mentioned, so it's broken up into a, a kit. So we are expecting to move 10 of the shelves without bins and we have zero of them reserved. So none of them are done and none of them are actually on the shelf. So we can't really do it yet because these things are made to order. And then we have the plastic bins, the red ones. We are expecting to ship 180 and uh, we, have 100, we have 45 of them already on a shelf and they are, they are reserved for this specific shipment. But nothing is done yet. So now that we process two of the orders, 
the next thing to do will be to take a look and see how the inventory moves and how the production will run through the system and propagate uh, all the steps and uh, pull all the materials to make the sales and deliveries happen.